Many of the behaviors we observe our feline family members displaying are closely controlled by genes. These behaviors are called innate behaviors. They are behaviors that are inborn, naturally occurring in all members of a species. Within each species, innate behaviors are predictable. These behaviors can be performed in response to a cue, like the changing of the seasons, daylight, etc., without prior experience or exposure to a particular cue. Think of them as reflex responses or actions. Unlike behaviors such as learning to ride a bike, tying your shoe, or brushing your teeth, innate behaviors do not have to be learned or practiced. Innate behaviors are instinctive, they're controlled by genes and always occur in the same way, and they generally involve basic life functions, so it's important that they be performed correctly. Innate behaviors are also called instinctive behaviors. An instinct is the ability of an animal to perform a behavior the first time it is exposed to something that causes a response within their body. A few examples are courtship, mating, mothering, escaping, defense maneuvers, and caching. Caching is one example of an innate behavior. Um, the motivation and drive behind the behavior of caching will vary among species based on their specific instinctual survival needs. Many species of animals practice the behavior of caching. Here are a few examples. Squirrels, chipmunks, foxes, hamsters, honeybees, rooks, wolves, woodpeckers, scrub jays, mountain lions, and house cats. This caching behavior that we see cats do can be compared to the behavior that has been widely documented by wildlife conservationists. Once a wildcat has eaten his or her fill of their prey, the cougar will cover their prey with substrate. This could be grass, leaves, or other ground material to protect it from spoiling or from be being eaten by other animals. Uh, the cougar usually remains in the area near his or her cache for several days and will occasionally return to feed on the carcass. Uh, bobcats will also do this. They will cover their remains with um, snow, leaves, twigs, and grass. Uh, panthers will rake leaves and twigs over a carcass to hide them from scavengers. And this behavior is very common and it's part of a natural and healthy wild cat. So the caching behavior, often what it looks like with house cats, is the cat is burying something. You'll see the cat pawing at the carpet, the kitchen tile, or dragging her, his or her front paw on the floor around their food around the food mat, the puzzle feeder, or the bowl. The cat may become so focused on burying the food that he or she pushes the food mat or the plate around. Some cats may pull a blanket, tissue paper, or a food mat over their leftovers if these items are nearby. And after the leftover food is buried, the cat will calmly walk away. This is a normal, healthy behavior. Now, there's no formal published papers on this exact behavior concerning house cats, but we do know that many of the instinctual behaviors we see in house cats stem from their wild cat cousins. And I believe that the caching behavior in house cats is directly related to the behavior in their wild counterparts. As all cats are both predator and prey, much of what we will observe in their behavior will reflect these two important feline aspects. We know from accounts of wild cat conservationists that cats who live in the wild, feral cats, cougars, panthers, they will often attempt to bury uneaten food, or a recently killed carcass. And it's believed that wildcat species do this to, one, avoid attracting predators to the area, and two, attempt to not alert potential prey that a feline hunter is in the vicinity. So we need to think about house cats who cache. You know, this behavior is very common, and when people see it, they often think it's because their cat doesn't like their food, but most likely it's an innate behavior inherited from their ancestors. Even those comfy house cats who have never set paw outside retain this important feline instinct.